Hi everybody, it's me, Andrew, here at Allegory Gallery in Ligonier, Pennsylvania. Um, today on our little Facebook Live segment, I thought that we would do something uh, that I love and have been doing for a while. It's mold making. Uh, it's a simple mold um, that we're going to be making. It's with uh, mold putty. Uh, you can get this at uh, Amazing uh, Casting Products. Uh, I think the website is uh, www.moldputty.com um, and if you Google um, amazing ca casting uh, products, uh, this will come up. But before we start, uh, one of the things that I like to do is kind of get in the mood to make artwork. Um, and some of the classes that we have and, um, and the things that we do in the store or when we're at a show, I don't always get to talk about this, but for me, artwork is uh, something spiritual. It's something that connects me to something that's greater than myself. Um, it's a very mindful and meditative process, and I feel as though um, it's a very essential part of who I am as a person. Um, so what I like to do is I kind of like to set the mood. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna light this candle if you're interested in this candle it's um, fresh cut grass um, you can pick this up at a store in town called G squared uh, they have a lot of different flavors one of my favorites is the lemongrass but um, sometimes I make my own candles but um, this is a um, something that I enjoy. We have Valerie Fletcher, Gina Chalfon, and Sue Woods all saying hello. Hello. Um, I hope you're feeling better, Gina, and recovering quick. Um, so now that I've kind of set the mood, I've got some nice music on. I've got the soundtrack to Chocolat, um, which is one of my favorites. Um, I'm going to get ready. Um, and one of the things I also like to do is I like to surround myself with inspiration. And one of the things we're going to be working on is a, uh, the fantasy stones. And the fantasy stones are kind of, uh, we started, me and my sister Cynthia started making these um, to make faux opals. And we really loved them. And we thought uh, we could go one step further and make stones that we didn't really necessarily see in nature. Um, and one of my favorite cuts is a simple cut and the simple cut in stones is um, let me move this so uh, it, it really just captures the essence of the stone uh, without diminishing too much or taking away too much of the material but it gives it a nice kind of uh, a nice polish and crispness and kind of sets it off okay so the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to make the master of our fantasy stone and that will eventually be this not to spoil the surprise of our project today but um this is also part one so you'll have to tune in tomorrow for part two of this project and maybe even a part three um <laughs> so not too um make you come and watch but okay um so what i've got is i've got uh some super sculpey this is um one of my favorite sculpting mediums i've been using it for a long time um and it is uh something that i always default on because it uh is a firmer one it's not as brittle as some of the other ones and it's um it'll take detail really well and it also, um, if your hands run hot, it won't kind of mash up the detail. Now I've also got um, a color here, as you can see. And this color is really not important. Um, I'm using Primo Sculpey, but you could really use any uh, brand that works with the uh, Super Sculpey. Uh, what this is is a trick that I do. Um, what I do is uh, to make sure that my clay is properly conditioned and that means having all of the um, plasticizers in the polymer clay 
uh, thoroughly distributed throughout um, the clay so that there's no breaking or cracking um, is uh, uh, it's an important step whenever you're working with polymer. Uh, when you first open a package of polymer uh, and if it's really fresh it's not super essential that you work it a lot but with this we are actually going to I need to do that. Um, so what I do is I take a piece of Super Sculpey um, and I put a little bit of the color in and it's a trick because you don't necessarily have to do this. You can keep working the Super Sculpey until it has um, a nice flexibility to it. And there's also little different tests that you can do where you can kind of pull it and depending on if it breaks or if you press it if there are cracks, then you need to condition it more. But this is kind of an, a visual way of doing the same process without, um, you know, it's fun because you don't have to uh, do all these other kind of guesstimating. So what you do is you basically roll it out until um, it's evenly colored. And um, for the sake of time, and since I don't want to run our data plan up or down, um, I've cheated and I've done this in advance. And what I do is um, I've got a nice fancy um, uh, pasta roller machine and I just run it through a couple times and I get uh, the color all nice and uniform. So you'll go from something that's marbled like this to something that's uniform in color like this. Now, if you still see marbling or veining in the clay, just keep on working it and it will get this uh, color eventually. Now, like I said earlier, you don't need this kind of army green uh, toy soldier color. You can use any color. This won't matter at all because your final project uh, will have nothing to do with this color. Uh, so what I do is you'll notice that I've set down a tile. Um, I like to have uh, surfaces that I can move um, and can take with me because sometimes you'll be working in one area and the light will change or you'll need to make space in your studio. And this is really convenient because you can just lift it up, take it and go. Um, and also you can clean them. Uh, if you need to stick them in the oven, you can stick them in the oven. Um, it's super easy. So what I'm gonna do right now is roll out a piece of the polymer clay and then I'm going to press it down. So I've got this shape um, and I could use that, but I'm going, I want something that's a little bit more organic. So I'm going to elongate it a little bit and press it down. So right now I've got this little thing. It looks kind of like uh, Gumby lost a limb or uh, somebody dropped their candy or something. Um, and I'm just gonna flip it over. And what I just did right there is I completely flattened the side and it's easy. Um, so you might notice uh, a part of this project that you'll need today to make this is a tissue blade. These are super sharp. You can cut yourself and I've seen it happen. I've seen somebody pick it up and they pick it the wrong side and then there's blood. And for me, you know, uh, I don't really like a lot of blood or to have a cut. So, um, what I do is I take a little Sharpie or an Adenta pen. Um, I love Adenta pens. They're from Sakura. They're super uh, light fast and they don't come off on things. Um, and just mark the end. Um, another trick you can do is if you've got washi tape, um, you can put a little piece of washi tape on it um, and just uh, signifies where the safe place to touch is. Now don't put it on the part that you're gonna need to cut because then it's, you know, then your blade's gonna be pretty much useless. Um, put it on the part that you can touch. Uh, so what we're gonna do is make the basic shapes for our stone. Um, you can use a template if you want, as an example. I kinda just freeform it and let it go 
as it is. Um, and so what I'll do is I just chop the basic shapes. And I have a little pile that I start that um, I keep all my scraps. And, um, and then I can use those for other projects or for more stone. The fun thing about this is that you could do this all day if you wanted. Because it's super fun, super easy, and you can make as many shapes as you want. I've kind of got a rough rectangle right now, but that doesn't look anything like that, does it? So what I'm gonna do is um, chop the corners off. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a firm uh, kind of press down. You don't wanna have it angled at this time. You wanna make sure that uh, the blade isn't wobbling. Um, because this is a flexible blade, so you don't want it to uh, curve when you're cutting, uh, but you do want to make sure that it's cutting crisp, clean lines. And also make sure that your blade is clean, because I've seen where if you've used this a couple times, something will get stuck, and then when you're cutting, it'll scratch the clay as it's going, so you don't necessarily want that to happen. Um, then what you're gonna do is uh, gently take this up, and start cutting away on you're going to do about a 45 degree angle and you're basically faceting your stone um now if you want you could in theory get a lap grinder um and a diamond blade with a little bit of water and um and just uh bake your piece of polymer and then do this. This is how uh, with a lap grinder or grinder uh, they do that to cut regular stones. So it's actually super satisfying and really kind of uh, meditative to just uh, zzz, 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 and kind of work on the facets. Uh, but what I do is I take most of the um, I take most of the broad uh, angles first and then uh, after I've done that I go back over and trim off the edges and kind of create uh, that emerald cut. Now so who all is out there now? We have Kelly Russell just joined us, Donna Hoblitz out here, Ger Gerald Swanson Black, um, Cat Kara's here, Sue McCaffrey. Oh boy, we've got some. Gaia said no bloodstones in the mix here. We could make blood, faux <laughs> bloodstones, but not with my blood. So, um, so this is kind of intimidating a little bit because we've got a pretty uh, esteemed uh, audience out there. You have uh, Gina Chalfont of White Swan Illuminations, uh, who is a master ceramicist and. Gaia, who is a ceramicist and a painter, and we just had a show with her work, and um, it was amazing to see her pieces, and Kat Kerr, um, who is uh, well known in the mixed media circle. Uh, she was just actually on, uh, filmed, uh, not at the same time that me and Cynthia filmed, but uh, she filmed a couple segments from Make It Artsy. Um, Make It Artsy is a show on PBS that has just started airing the second season on uh, March 30th. Um, so make sure to check your local listings and you can see people like me and Cynthia and Kat uh, and Susan um, and Miss Stow and um, a whole bunch of really cool people. Uh, and Kelly Russell's super cool, does polymer and metal clay and we have Robin Hutchins, Sienna Norris, Deb Floros is here, Pamela Hawkins, who says she's a polymer virgin here. Oh boy. Well, uh, you should be okay because um, uh, for this project, you're actually going to uh, dig in your craft stash. And I know you have this because we've talked about this before, and it's the mold putty. Um, but so we've got the polymer clay. Um, and we've got um, the basic shape of our stone. Now, if you have any little giblets, uh, and that's a technical term, 
um, just lightly brush them off. You can also get a spritzer of water and that um, will help uh, make your surface super smooth. Now you might be wondering why I've got a ramic in here. Um, because uh, you're gonna be like, whoa, is he gonna make creme brulees later? What is he gonna do? I hope so. Uh, well, not tonight. <laughs> um, we're actually gonna flip this over and use it as a baking surface. Uh, sorry, William, no creme brulee tonight. Um, so, and that wasn't a euphemism. Um, so anyways, so you've got your piece and you just pop it in the oven. I like to tent it with a little aluminum foil. It's 275 for 15 minutes for each quarter of an inch thickness. So basically follow the directions on your uh, package and you'll be great. Um, and this, these uh, bake up pretty quick so you don't have to worry. Um, with the power of TV, not TV, Facebook Live, um, I've already done it. I always liked how when I was a kid and watching like Julia Childs, um, she would go and she'd be like, oh, and then you put all this stuff in there. And then with the power of TV, it's done. Donna Hoblet has a question. Can you put a hole in it long ways and use it as a bead? Uh, you could. At this point, um, if you were just working with polymer, um, yes. Uh, what you would do is there's a, a tool called an awl, um, which is basically just a pointy metal stick, and you would push it through until you see a slight indication on the other side, flip it over, and push it back through. And you do that before baking, right? Uh, before baking. If you do this after, you would want to use a Dremel tool or a Fordham and use a bit, use a steady hand up and down motion, a little bit of water so you don't get the cancer time, um, and uh, use that to create a hole. Now also when you want to do that, you want to make sure that it's thick enough to do it. These guys are pretty thin, so unless you want the blood time, which we're going to try to avoid, um, then you would want to either double up or make it a little bit thicker which is easy. But for this project, we won't be drilling any holes today at least. Um, so you would put it in the oven, you'd uh, bake it for the appropriate time, and you have this nice little piece that is our master. Now the fun thing is, is that if you wanted, you could make these in all different kind of shapes. You can have them puzzle piece um, and fit together, lock together. Um, now the back, um, it doesn't look like too much. And the reason why is because it doesn't really matter for our project. Um, you could do anything you want, but that side's not gonna really count. So we're not gonna spend too much time on it. So when you're shaving, you don't have to worry about that side. No, um, if you wanna be fancy, you can do it, but um, you don't have to do that. And one thing I'm going to do is take off my rings because I don't like uh, mold putty in my rings. I've got little little crevices and stuff and um, the last thing I want to do is uh, pick those out. Um, so do you have any, are there any questions? So far, no. Margo just says she calls that the pokey toll. The all. The pokey tool. <laughs> Very technical term. Uh, definitely. Um, Laurel just joined us. Um, and she's local, so she mm -hmm. could really, in real life... Mercedes Berg joined in. Oh, okay. Um, it's nice to see Halstead represented um, in the house. Um, I saw the project that um, Katie and you did to restring your rosary, um, and it looked good. I like purple. Um, so, right now, you see me fishing around. It's because my fingers aren't long enough. And um, normally I would get up and get a tool, but I have this, so I'm gonna pry out some. And basically the mold putty is um, super easy to use and is um, a great way of capturing texture. Um, it allows you to um, make really simple molds. Um, these are called one part molds. Um, if you want to, you can do 
two-part molds, which are for more three-dimensional items. This is great for uh, like uh, reliefs and getting um, kind of uh, one side or three uh, around, but not all the way around. If you wanted to do that, that's a little bit more of a complex process, where, which we won't be doing today. Pamela is asking, if you have mold putty for a long time and you mold with it, can it sort of disintegrate when you're taking things out of it, like little bits stay in crevices? Uh, yes and no. One thing about that is when you're creating an object or a master, for um, usage in a mold. You want to avoid what are called undercuts. And that's basically where any of the clay or whatever uh, medium you're putting in can get stuck and pull out. Um, uh, so that will uh, make your molding a little bit easier and it'll also uh, increase the life of your mold. Um, also, if you don't mix your mold putty all the way thoroughly, um, you can also have a breakdown in your uh, finished mold. Um, but also, the more you use it, if you use it hundreds and hundreds of times, eventually um, you'll get some kind of loss of detail. Um, when we're casting with molten metal, um, they use a high temperature silicone mold for the pewter. And that will break down over time and you have to have a master that you kind of remake the molds um, periodically so that you don't have too much of a loss of detail. We have Valerie Tillman joining us, Angela Taylor from the UK, I believe. Oh, wow. And Alison Bruinger. I'm going to mess that up. Oh, great. So it's a good group of folks. Um, so... Um, We've got, um, one of the things you can do always, you don't need these videos, you don't really need me. You can read the directions nicely printed on the containers, and if you do so, then you don't have to worry about uh, looking up my Facebook Live video. But I appreciate that you're here, so I'm not going to stress that too much. So what we've got is two equal parts and some cat hair of um, the mold making uh, putty. And we're just gonna mix these until it's all thoroughly combined and uniform in color. Um, and I like this, it's got, an, this is one of my favorite brands of mold putties. There's a couple different ones. Um, I feel like this one captures the most um, detail. Um, it also um, has a nice working life to it. Um, some of them set up really fast or really slow. And so this has a nice um, working life um, and um, it makes it nice. If you have any other brands that you'd like to suggest, I'd be happy to try them out. Um, but uh, this one is my preferred molding putty of the moment. So now that we've got the um, piece in uniform color, we're going to roughly roll this out into the shape that we're going to make, and I'm gonna press. Now, there's some folks who like to push, push their molding putty around their piece like that. I like to take this flat surface you can see there's no creases. If you have creases in your mold putty, it will put a crease in your mold and then a crease in your finished product. So then I just press down. Now this is actually quite a lot of mold putty for this small piece, but you know what, that's cool. I can always order more. Now, so I've pressed this around our master. Um, you can see it doesn't look like very much. Um, uh, as far as your technical skills, but that's where um, the mold changes here. So I've got uh, the mold putty pressed in. I press down, and so what this does is, when you're pouring resin, you don't want your piece to rock back and forth, or if you have a smooth side on the bottom, 
and it will kind of turn. This is kind of a nice footing, make sure it's level. And then another trick that I do is I pinch around the edges. And somebody asked me why I do that, and it's because when I pour resin, I don't like to spill stuff and cause a sticky mess. Um, now you also want to make sure that there's no gaps in your mold. And also, if you feel, you can feel your piece through the mold putty. If you feel it's coming through, take a piece off from where there's a lot and patch it while it's still um, curing because then you won't have any places where the resin can leak out. Um, and you don't want to uh, have anything leak out and um, ruin your carpet or uh, you know getting your keyboard or whatever um, so now we will let this cure for 20 minutes and then we can remove our piece what I do after I let it cure is I let it cure even further by not using it for 24 hours now this is not on the instructions but I found that um, when I let it cure for 24 or 48 hours while this is still curing, the um, the mold putty, it, while it's curing, can off-gas. And so when you're pouring resin, particularly clear resin, now if you're using opaque resin, it doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, it matters from a structural point of view, where if you have a lot of air bubbles in your piece, then you can snap in half. Um, but if you have a clear one, you can actually see the air bubbles. Um, and we don't necessarily want that for our finished product. So um, I usually let this cure for at least 24 hours and then um, it's good to go because as it's kind of mixing together, it's uh, releasing gases and you don't want those trapped in your resin. Uh, so I think that's it for today. Um, We'll come back and we'll do more with the fantasy stones. Um, if we have any questions up until this point, this would be a good time to express them. Are there any questions out there? Doesn't look like it so far. Now, if you are, you, if you're not really into this kind of Facebook Live setup, you can also go to some of my previous episodes on beads, bubbles, and jewels, um, or Make It Artsy. I think I have something. Um, and I do step-by-step -step on making mold putty molds. Um, and uh, those you can pause and rewind. I don't know how easy that is to do on Facebook. but um, We'll also post this to our YouTube channel as well. Okay. Um, and so, uh, so the next step uh, is to let this cure, and then um, I guess I'll see you guys later. Um, and thank you so much for joining us and for making this a fun process, um, and for joining us in our little creative space. Have a great day. Bye-bye.